Instagram, tell me how to make money, please. It's simple. You make a great product that provides value for people, create a storefront to sell this product, and market your product to increase sales. That's it. It will take hard work, but if you play your cards right, you should profit from your endeavors. That sounds like a lot of hard work. Yes, it is, but do you have anything easier? I truly don't care about providing value for others. I just want to get absurdly rich as fast as possible, no matter the cost. Wow, that uh, really just showed me your true colors. I have something for you, but I have to warn you, it is extremely unethical and will probably- I don't care about ethics, I just want money. Okay, okay. I have a method, but you need to promise to not use it. Okay, I promise. You aren't just saying that, are you? No. Are you sure? No. I mean, yes. Okay, here it is. You've been warned. The first step in your path to riches. You need to find a cause that a lot of people care about. The more emotionally charged, the better. This cause should make people feel emotions of either sadness or outrage. This will make your work easier in later stages of the cycle. Now you may be asking, how do I find a cause? Simple, just keep updated with the news cycle. What new event or cause has been taking Twitter by storm? What can people just not stop talking about? Keep updated with influencers and don't let any profitable cause escape your attention. The newer the better. You want people to only look at your brand as the solution for helping the cause. Established charities and organizations helping this cause are bad for business. In the world of Instagram activism, it's a dog-eats-dog -dog world, and you want to be the first dog to the party. In other words, first mover advantages matter. Some examples of previous causes that have created successful accounts are the Sudan Crisis, Australian wildfires, and Black Lives Matter. Choose your cause wisely. You must establish trust with your audience. Without trust, you will never be able to eventually profit from your ill-gotten audience. You must create content that solidifies your place as a trustworthy influencer in your field. This means breaking out your branding skills in order to create five to six posts that establishes you as a legitimate brand. Your goal should be to have a random user look at your account and say, this is a trustworthy account that knows what they are talking about. This is inherently good, and I will listen to what this account has to say. This step is essential. Without trust from a captive audience, the rest of the cycle will fall into disarray. Don't mess this up. You now have trust from your audience. Hopefully you have used a combination of follow for follow, shoutouts, and liking to get a few hundred followers. Now is the time to kick your growth into overdrive. We will do this using viral marketing. In the simplest terms, viral marketing is making use of existing social networks to promote a product. And no, when I say social networks, I am not referring to social media networks. I am referring to any point of communication between two individuals on a personal level. This could be anything from texts, to emails, to Reddit messages, to Instagram stories, which will be our social network of choice. Viral marketing is so powerful because it relies on other people to grow your brand. Much like the plagues, viruses, and infections that viral marketing gets its name from, you want your message to slowly infect your audience through the actions of other people. The success of your viral marketing campaign hinges entirely on the value of what is called the viral coefficient. This is essentially a measure of new users you get from your existing users already promoting your brand. To put it in the context of Instagram stories, Let's say that your post initially gets shared on five Insta stories. Of these initial shares, three friends that saw these stories reposted the story. 
You divide your gained users, 3, by your initial users, 5, to get your viral coefficient. Whether your post goes viral or not depends entirely on whether your post has a viral coefficient greater than 1. If it is more than 1, you have the world. If it is less than 1, you have a failing post. In order to ensure our viral coefficient is greater than 1, we need to add an extra oomph to our post to make people extra likely to share it. We will do this by adding an incentive for sharing our post. For example, we can say that for every repost, our account will donate 10 cents to fight or fund our cause. You need to be careful here. Promising too much money will instantly raise red flags around your account, while promising too little money will decrease your viral coefficient. You need to carefully balance generosity and realism. People are always looking for ways to help the causes they care about, and our post gives them a free way to do just that. At this point, you have an account that has a viral post giving you a steady stream of new audience. The problem is, this audience expects you to donate tens of thousands of dollars to charity. This won't happen. You need an excuse to not donate the money if you hope to make a profit from your venture. You have a wide variety of tools at your disposal. You could say that you donated the money donate a small amount and Photoshop the rest, or say that you'll be shifting your focus to helping the cause privately, whatever that means. Whatever method you choose, you need to trick your audience into thinking that you are still an ethical organization. Some will inevitably not trust you, so you need to break out your PR skills. Release a statement reaffirming your devotion for your cause. Be sure to blame some other controversial outside group for trying to ruin your account. View Crisis Diverted for the time being. The step you have been waiting for. You can finally profit from your hard work. Although this is listed as the last step, you should be trying to profit from your account as soon as you have a post go viral. You have two options. The first is to direct the attention gained from this account to your other personal endeavors. Maybe you have a meme page that you want to grow. This is a perfect opportunity to do so. Use the story feature to direct your followers to other pages that you are affiliated with. The second and better way of profiting from your account is to direct the attention gained from your account to a business that you own. Start by creating a Shopify store. Buy a domain name related to your account and set up your store with similar branding to your Instagram page. You can use a number of trustworthy dropshipping sites using Shopify plugins to instantly source cheap goods from China. You can also use print-on-demand websites for something with a more personal touch. Either way, you want to have an on-brand product that you can sell at a ridiculously high markup. From here, your job is easy. Use a story post on Instagram to direct traffic to your new business. You watch as your sales slowly trickle in. This increasing trend of exploiting social media causes for profit is truly one of the most deplorable social media trends in the last couple of years. To Instagram's credit, many of the accounts that were talked about in this video have been deleted and are no longer scamming audiences. But this doesn't mean that the problem has been solved. There are many accounts still active on Instagram that continue to use the tactics listed in this video to trick audiences. Despite not actively taking money from audiences, these accounts become a drain on social media platforms by making outlandish promises that will never be fulfilled. Now you may be asking yourself, what can I do to help fight this problem? The simplest way to help is to first do your research on an account that you suspect of being a scam account. Some things to look at include whether an account is verified, whether an account is a trustworthy business, 
and whether an account has given proof of donations in the past. If you still can't figure it out, there are a couple of scam finding accounts on Instagram that tend to make trustworthy judgments on whether an account is a scam or not. If, after doing your research, you determine that an Instagram account is likely a scam account, then you should report it, preferably from multiple accounts if you have them. This increases the chance that Instagram will investigate these accounts and hopefully delete them from the platform. You can also help by actively fighting disinformation. If you see a friend reposting a notable scam Instagram account on their story, point out that it may or may not be a scam. Encourage them to do research. Even better, share this video with them. Collaboration between Instagram and its users is ultimately the only solution to this problem. Any attempt to regulate viral marketing tactics risks the leading accounts that host contests to raise money. And at the end of the day, that is not what we want. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And with that, the only thing left to say is, bye.